Good morning, and welcome to worship today. Uh, today you have uh, the privilege of uh, tolerating my wife and me for uh, conducting the service, and we hope it goes, well, goes well. As far as the announcements, um, they're in your bulletin, that I, all that I know of. Uh, next Sunday we'll have Pastor Deb Hansen, and there will be communion, and it'll be Senior Recognition Sunday. Um, and as far as further announcements, uh, Travis has some. Good morning. Uh, first, Mara is going to speak to the youth convention. Mass always goes in my earring. Um, we're going to be uh, heading up, trying to have some youth go to the youth gathering, which is next summer in July. It's the 28th through the 20, I mean 24th through the 28th. So the youth will be doing a little fundraising, hopefully, if we have youth that sign up. It's seventh graders through eleventh graders that can go, and it's usually. Um, about, I don't even know how many people go nowadays, but it's thousands of kids that gather from across the nation into the Twin Cities this time. So, um, so yeah, we'll be spreading the word and hopefully we'll get a good group of youth that will want to attend. I'm not sure what fundraising they'll want to do, but if you see fundraisers for them, just kind of try to participate just because it takes, we're, we're thinking even though it's the Twin Cities, it'll take roughly about $900 per youth to go. So it still is enough money to try and raise in our community. So thanks for your support and for spreading the word that we're going to try and get a group together. Thank you. Uh, just a few more announcements. One is, that, you know, as you know, the CDC came out with different guidelines, which is opposed and not opposed, but confusing to us in the church through the synod. Um, the synod guidelines are a tish different, and they're ever-changing, as we know. Currently, the synod guidelines have us um, to stay wearing a face covering in a church um, until the 70% vaccination rate is reached in our state, and then the synod will come out with other guidelines. So... That's just an announcement on that. Also, we have a beautiful parsonage, and we need to keep it that way, so we need to clean it, um, meaning the outside, spring cleaning, the gutters, the windows, the lawn, um, window wells, um, things like that. So I need people to show up to help on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m., I'll bring my pickup, I'll have a ladder, I'll have rakes, and, um, you know, bring your youth. Um, but we need help so it can go quickly. So I appreciate that. So that's this Tuesday, 6.30. Last announcement is on our call committee. We've been working really hard, and we've put in lots of hours to try to fill out our ministry site profile. We have a great team. And we've reached the step to where it's time to survey the congregation. This is an anonymous survey. It's filled out one per person, not per household. And youth are invited to fill it out. It'll be administered in three different ways. One, today anyone present um, will be uh, passing out the written survey so that you can take it home. So we'll have an usher the next two weeks, pass that out to each one individually. And we'll also be mailing it out. So if you get the bulletin, and anyone online listening, if you receive the bulletin, you will receive this anonymous survey through that format. Also, we'll use what's called SurveyMonkey, which is an online option, and that will be email, emailed out to our email list. There will be a basket that's consistently in the back of the church, and it may even be moved out 
side by the front doors um, for you to be able to drop off your completed survey. The deadline is May 29th. That's when we would like to pick them up so we can continue on with our ministry site profile. And thank you all, always and everyone for keeping the call committee in your prayers. Thanks. Thank you. Um, being on the call committee, we've been working pretty steadily on the things that need to be done, and uh, uh, there's more to do. Uh, we'll begin our worship. Uh, please rise. <clears throat> Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. We'll open with our hymn uh, 532 uh, in, Eel, in the Lutheran Book of Worship. <clears throat> Here in this place a new light is streaming Now is the darkness vanished away See in this space our fears and our dreamings Brought here to you in the light of this day Gather us in the lost and forsaken Gather us in the blind and the lame Call to us now and we shall awaken We shall arise at the sound of our name We are the young, our lives are a mystery We are the old who yearn for your face we have been sung throughout all of history, called to be like to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lonely, give us the courage to enter the soul. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> The first reading today is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 26. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, together the crowd numbered about 120 persons, and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus, for he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in the ministry. So one of the men who have accomplished, who have accompanied us during all the time that Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. 
Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Jesus, Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The psalm is Psalm 1, and let us read it responsively. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. The second reading comes to us today from 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through 13. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Here ends the reading. Um, Next will the gospel acclam acclamation. Please rise. <clears throat> halle, halle, halle. Our gospel comes to us today from the 17th chapter of John, verses 6 through 19. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and, all, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. And But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. 
I've given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I'm asking you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they may also be sanctified in truth. Here ends the gospel. I'm looking to see if there are any children. Is there, are there any kids who want to come up and join me for the children's sermon? Solvi. <laughs> We pray for our president, we pray for our government, 
We pray for our police. We pray for anyone who is our leader. So that's the leader um, section. The next finger is the ring finger. See, my wedding ring is on that finger. And that's kind of a weak finger. If you were to try to pick something up with that finger, it doesn't work very well. In fact, when I use my, my ring finger, my, my little finger <laughs> shows up too. It's like it can't even work on its own. That's the prayer we pray for the week. For those people who are sick or who are hurt or are in poor in spirit or poor at heart, we pray for others. We pray for those who are weak. That finger. So we've got, we've got thanks, we've got praise, we've got leaders, we pray for those who are weak. And then the last is our little finger, and that's us. We're the littlest people, aren't we? So God wants us to pray for ourselves. So praise, every prayer should praise, thanks, praying for your leaders, praying for the weak, and praying for ourselves. So knowing that, it gets use our fingers and dial into God, right? And we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and this opportunity for us to be together. We praise you, Lord, for all the gifts you give, beautiful sunshine, warm, warm winds. We thank you, Lord, for our beautiful church and our lovely parsonage. Lord, we pray for our parents and our teachers. We pray for our president and our bishop. We pray for our call committee and for our council. Lord, we also pray for those who are weak, those who are sick, or injured, or in spirit. We pray for anyone in need. And Lord, most of all, we pray for us. We ask you to help us in our church, and we ask you to give us rain for our crops. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. When I was at Malo, I had to make everybody in the congregation be my children. So <laughs> they were my own children. So they were my guinea pigs. The next hymn is from With One Voice, uh, number 649. child of the light I want to follow Jesus God set the stars to give light to the world the star of my life is Jesus in him there is no darkness at all but night and the day are both alike. The flame is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness, shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In Him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The flame is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm looking for the coming of Christ. I want to be with Jesus. When we have run with patience the race, we shall know the joy of Jesus. In Him there is 
is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The flame is a light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Sometimes kids have an interesting take on the world and how it works. Someone took the time to interview a group of children on a variety of topics. The following are some of these children's views on the topic of love. A seven-year-old said, if falling in love is anything like learning how to spell, I don't want to do it. It takes too long. Or a five-year-old boy who said, once I'm in kindergarten, I'm going to find me a wife. Or David, aged eight, stated, Love will find you, even if you are trying to hide from it. I've been trying to hide from it since I was five, but the girls keep finding me. An eight-year-old observed, I think you're supposed to get shot with an arrow or something, but the rest of it isn't supposed to be so painful. Another, Love is when a girl puts on perfume and a boy puts on aftershave and they go out and smell each other. And my favorite, when someone loves you, the way they say your name is different. You know that your name is safe in their mouth. Beautiful. Today's gospel is actually Jesus' longest prayer in the Bible, and it's a prayer for those he loved best, his followers. I believe that it's a prayer of love. Jesus' prayer to his Father about the people he loves, us. He speaks to God on our behalf, asking God for unity, protection, joy, and sanctification as we carry out his mission in the world. It's prayed with love and concern for his followers. What a glorious thought. Jesus prays for us because he loves us. I genuinely feel this gospel is timely for us. Pastor Janet has moved on to her next call, and we're feeling a bit directionless, rudderless, lost. We certainly don't feel capable or adequate to carry on alone. We are in the process of evaluation and assessment. Our call committee is meeting to look at our needs as a church and beginning the search for whom will best help us to continue the mission to which Jesus calls us. <laughs> we are feeling as lost as the disciples in today's gospel. Isn't it wonderful to know that Jesus prays for us? So what's the context of this passage? It takes place in the upper room. It's before Jesus' trial and crucifixion. And it was meant to be overheard by the disciples. And I believe that probably the words that Jesus prayed in this prayer offered them more than any of the teachings that had come in the chapters before. Jesus is about to be gone. And his church is about to be left in the hands of its followers. 
He's not going to be there in the flesh, and his disciples will face many dangers. But remember, this is not just a prayer for the 11, and as we heard in the lesson today, Matthias made it 12 eventually. But this is a prayer for Christians of every age, a prayer for us. John 17 has been considered the greatest prayer ever prayed. It's also been called the Lord's Prayer, which is interesting because we're much more familiar with the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6 or Luke 11. That was actually, probably should be called the Disciples Prayer because it was Jesus' response when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray. But this one's different. This is called the Lord's Prayer because it is Jesus' personal prayer to his Father. Scholars have also called it the high priestly prayer, and they've called it the high priestly prayer for two reasons. The first is that the high priest was the one who offered up the lamb for sacrifice for the sins of the people, and Jesus is about, just in hours, about to offer up himself as the perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world. But the second reason why it's called the high priestly prayer is more important to me because just as the high priest in the Jewish faith would pray on behalf of his people, this is a prayer that Jesus prays on behalf of his followers. Now, the word that's used is intercede, that he intercedes on our behalf, and that's kind of a fancy word. The definition of intercession is to get involved in something on behalf of another person or to speak on another's behalf. Synonyms might include mediate or plead or advocate or intervene. Jesus intercedes on our behalf because he loves us. Isn't that amazing? So let's take a little bit of time and look at what Jesus asks for on our behalf. If you don't mind, I'd like you to pull out your bulletins. And uh, I'm a teacher, so uh, text study is kind of what I do. So I'd like you to take a look at today's text. And I'm going to just pull out some verses and talk about what is it that Jesus prays for us personally and for us as a congregation. In verses 6 through 8, Jesus tells us that he has revealed God's name. He has revealed God's name. And we have to remember that the Jewish people were very careful with God's name. They believed that God's name was synonymous with his character or God's nature. And they considered his name too sacred to pronounce. Part of Jesus' mission on earth is to make God's name known so that we can know God's true nature. God the Father is much more accessible through Jesus the Son. Jesus also says that the disciples have kept God's word. It's right in there. It says the disciples have kept God's word. And it's surprising to us that Jesus would say this considering how often They have and will fail Jesus. Prior to the resurrection, they are often clueless. They don't understand what Jesus has been teaching them, but they have placed their faith in Jesus. I find such comfort in this. The disciples were flawed and often misunderstood Jesus, but they kept their faith in Jesus because they believed he was sent by God. In verse 10, it says, Jesus says, I have been glorified in them. It seems astonishing that Jesus would claim to be glorified in the disciples. They're just a small, ordinary group of people with no extraordinary intelligence or talent. They seem unable to learn from the numerous clues that Jesus gives them concerning his future. They just don't seem to get it. They will betray him, deny him, run and hide on the day of his crucifixion. So how can Jesus claim to be glorified in them? 
We have to stop and think about what they accomplished. This small band of believers, with the help of the Holy Spirit, brought the Gospels to all the ends of the earth. However imperfect these disciples might have been, they succeeded in glorifying the Lord. These are encouraging words to us. (laughs) As a congregation, we feel dislodged and unfocused, leaderless and alone. We definitely don't feel qualified to carry out God's mission. Trust me when I say that I have felt like this in my personal life, and I certainly felt uh, inadequate and unqualified when it came to doing today's sermon. But we can rest assured that the glorification that began 2,000 years ago with our disciples continues in the work of our church today with the help of the Holy Spirit. In verse 11, you will see that Jesus calls on his Holy Father to protect the disciples. Up until now, Jesus has been the disciples' protector. But now, as he is about to depart, he asks the Father to assume the role of protector. And Jesus makes God's name known. And that name is Holy Father. Loving, caring, nurturing. Remember that they believed that God's name personified his character. God is revealed as the loving Father who protects and keeps us. Again, in verses 14 through 16, you got to skip down a little bit. He asked that the God would protect us from the evil one. We still live within this world of hatred, division, anger, fear, pain. How reassuring to know that God is our protecting Father. At the end of verse 11, he prays that they, meaning the disciples, might be one, as we are one, meaning God and and Jesus, his son. But the unity for which Jesus is praying is a unity of heart and purpose. And this is a prayer (laughs) that I believe is still trying to be answered in our world today. I sometimes feel that we have never been more fractured than we are today. I have seen the angry, hate-filled words that have been exchanged between Christians who spend more time arguing about what divides them than asking how they should be serving God's mission together. But in some respects, Jesus' prayer for unity is being answered. If we look more deeply, we can find Christians who are working together with a common purpose of serving God. Maybe we need to look within ourselves to see how we can find what unites us rather than dwelling on what divides us as believers. So far, Jesus has prayed that we might know God as his Father, that he might unite and protect us. In verse 13, he asks that we may have joy made full in ourselves. Isn't that a boost to our spirits? Because he loves us, he wishes us joy. Now keep in mind, he's not talking about, you know, necessarily about the common pleasures of this world, but he is wishing us the joys with deeper roots, the joy of creativity, productivity, service, the joy of knowledge of truth, and the joy of being in a right relationship with God. This is his prayer for his believers, and this is his prayer for us. In the last section, verses 17 through 19, Jesus asks God to sanctify them in your truth. Now, sanctification is, I don't know about you, but it does not come up in my regular conversation. It's a difficult word for us to understand. It comes from the Greek word, which means to make holy, or better yet, to set apart for God's service. We've already established that the disciples were flawed just as we are flawed. 
We need God's help to be set apart from worldly things, and we need God's help to be set apart for God's service. We need God's help to be more Christ-like in our mission to reach out to others. We are flawed, but Jesus prays to his Father on our behalf so that we might be sanctified, set apart for his service. So, this is Jesus' prayer for us. He doesn't send us out into the world to do his work alone. We may feel lost, unqualified, and flawed, but we have Jesus interceding with his Father on our behalf. He believes in our ability to spread the gospel with the help of the Holy Spirit. He prays for us individually and as a church to be unified in purpose, to be given joy, to be protected from the evil one, and to be more Christ-like in our words and in our actions as we carry out God's mission. He prays for us because he loves us. Let's follow the disciples' lead and joyfully carry out God's work together. Amen. The next hymn is from uh, With One Voice, 738. little technical difficulty. Strength to love each other every 
sister, every brother, spirit of all kindness, be our guide. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. us all your way of healing, spirit of compassion, fill each heart. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear. And hope beyond our sorrow. Please rise. In Christ, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now is the part of the service where we share the peace. Share the peace. Sharing the peace has taken on a different form, of course. So uh, God's peace be with you. If you want to wave or rub elbows or, you know. And also in the same fashion, just a reminder, uh, this is part in the service where we take the offering. The offering plate is in back and you are invited to uh, drop your offering off in the back of the church if you haven't done it on the, way, on the way in. So, let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify your spirit at work. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious Sovereign, those who follow your ways are like trees planted near streams of water. Establish the leaders of nations and all in authority in your grace and truth. Strengthen them so that the people they serve will have abundance life, abundant life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, 
poor, lonely, outcast, rejected or sick. Grant healing and love to all in need, especially Willis Grakow, Shirley Hamrick, Glenn Johnson, Marlene Owens, Frederick Sunby, Don and Shirley Vansicle, Tom Wilhelm, Wade Tranby, Marla Vosick, and David Miney. Give them tangible signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creator God, here in this community, we share the gift of praying, learning, and supporting one another. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us and keep us from being envious of others with different gifts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord, we look at the conditions of this world and we see civil war, people that are suffering from violence, hunger, and disease due to COVID. Please, Lord, strengthen us so that we can solve the problems and help each other. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May our glorious God grant you spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord. The God of life, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Be to God. Alleluia. And we'll close with hymn number 547. Send forth by God's blessing, the cold and confessing, the people of God from this dwelling take leave. The supper is ended, hold now be extended, the fruits of this service in all who believe. The seed of Christ's teaching, receptive souls reaching, shall blossom in action for God and for all. Your grace shall incite us, your love shall unite us, to work for your kingdom and answer your call. With praise and thanksgiving to God ever living, the tasks of our everyday life we will face. Our faith ever sharing, in love ever caring, embracing God's children, the whole human race. The sinner could feed us, with your light now lead us, unite us as one in this life that we share. Then may all the living, with praise and thanksgiving, give honor to Christ and his name that we bear. Thank you, Linda.